Hey, 42 here. As you will see in many a comment section, being first is very important to some people. We're a competitive race as humans, and there's a never-ending battle to be number one on the list, whether it's for lightning fast speeds, vast sums of money, or eating a frankly worrying volume of food in a very short time. And once your name is in the history book, it's there for good. But that's no guarantee that the general population will have any idea who the hell you are. Sure, we know the first man on the moon, the first people to fly, but other firsts become lost to the darkest corners of Wikipedia. So today, we're looking at some little known but astonishingly interesting firsts from history. Let's start on a nice depressing war. When all the dust has settled, the historians wander in, stretching their lever elbow patches and try to work out what on earth happened. So, in a war involving so many millions of deaths, does any one individual casualty have more importance than the others? Well, maybe. Franciszek Honiak could be described as the first casualty of World War II. But he is much more important than that. Germany and Poland had an ongoing dispute over their border, and the Nazis, being renowned for their patience, decided to take matters into their own hands. Honiak was an unmarried German farmer with Polish sympathies. On the 30th of August 1939, in the village of Polomia, he was arrested by the SS. The next day, the SS squad, dressed as Polish saboteurs, and stormed a radio station in the city of Gliwice and fired shots into the air. One German officer grabbed the microphone and shouted in Polish, Attention, this is Glavice. The broadcasting station is now in Polish hands. They then left Honiak's body, who they had already killed by injection, and filled him with bullet holes. They also added the bodies of other dead Germans dressed as Polish soldiers. These bodies were then presented as evidence that the Polish were attacking and the message that was screamed into the microphone was broadcast across the country. Honiak's death was used to justify the start of the war. Nazi propaganda at its very best. The following morning, on 1st of September 1939, Hitler declared war on Poland. I mean, it's probably been said before, but the Nazis really were a bunch of bastards. Although there are still inequalities in the world today, at least there's been some improvement in the spectrum of women in powerful positions. And we now have women leading Britain and Germany, and potentially America. But historically, we have not really let women up to the top table, possibly because we were embarrassed that we had got it so messy, and now we'd have to bother to put our pants on. There have been famous queens, such as Cleopatra, Catherine the Great, and Victoria, but when it came to proper non-royal leaders, it took quite some time for one to appear. Kotek Akima Toka was the first female leader of the modern world. In 1940, she was made chair of the Presidium of Little Kural, meaning she was the head of the Tuvan People's Republic. Tuva is now a part of Russia, but it was a member of the Soviet Union. When Akima Toka was born, Tuva was just beginning to form, having previously been a part of the Chinese Empire. The Bolsheviks helped set up the Tuvan People's Republic after the Russian Revolution of 1917. The new state helped women to read and write, since most were illiterate, and Akima Toka was one of the first to learn the new Tuvan alphabet. She then worked to help others gain an education and eventually won a place in a Moscow university, where she adopted Stalinist ideology, which was pretty important, since if you weren't a member of the Stalin fan club, things like your dinner, family, and life often got misplaced somehow. Of course, it's not just politics where women have been underrepresented. It's in the arts as well. In 2009, Catherine Bigelow became the first woman to win Best Director in 80 years of the Oscar Awards. Hurt Locker was the gritty story of a bomb disposal team in Iraq, but despite its brilliance, it only took home $12 million at the box office. Ironically, it beat Avatar in the Oscar race, directed by Bigelow's ex-husband, James Cameron, which is the highest grossing film of all time. Bigelow had a previous box office smash with Point Break, where she tried numerous times to kill off Keanu Reeves by throwing him out of planes and sending him off into a giant wave, but unfortunately she was unsuccessful and had to allow him to continue to act. 
The film is such a cult classic that there is now a touring stage show called Point Break Live. Since they don't have a spare broomstick to act Keanu's part, they fill it in every night with a different member of the audience. Julia Phillips was actually the first woman to win an Oscar for Best Film when she was a producer on the classic conman tale The Sting. Other notable Oscar firsts are Hattie McDaniel, the first black Oscar winner as supporting actress in Gone with the Wind, and of course Leonardo DiCaprio who probably deserves a mention as the most historically unsuccessful nominee to finally win an Oscar. Good on you Leo. It's a good job he did before he eventually snapped and went all man vs bear on the audience. Now we can't talk about firsts without talking about sports and where better to look than the Olympics. The modern Olympics was first held in Athens and American James Connolly won the very first gold medal for the triple jump. The 100 meter has often been the headline act and Jim Hines holds the official record as the first man to run it in under 10 seconds with 9.95 seconds in the 1968 final. There had been other sub 10 times before with American Bob Hayes being the first to ever make it on paper but a rule change about timing and wind speeds in 1977 meant that these times were no longer recognised. Physicists think it's unlikely that the world record will ever go below 9.4 seconds. And surprisingly, the best hope is actually the Paralympics. Since the blades, made famous by Oscar Pistorius, are lighter than a human leg and can increase the time connected with the ground and so apply more force. And finally, let's talk about love. On the 1st of April, 2001, Helene Fasson and Anne-Marie thus became the first gay couple to get married in the modern era, along with three other pairs of gay men. The wedding took place in Amsterdam, and since then we have seen about 20 countries follow suit by making it legal. The thing is, gay marriage is not a new thing at all. No one battered an eyelid when Roman Emperor Nero completed a love triangle by marrying a freedman called Pythagoras, and later a young boy called Sporus presumably chosen for his very small size, so the sum of him and Nero squared was equal to Pythagoras squared. There's also Pedro Diaz and Muno Vandilas, two men married in a Galatian church in 1061, and let's not forget the Siwa Oasis in Egypt, which used to have its very own form of same-sex marriage in its law. So with so many firsts already ticked off the list, you're gonna have to get creative if you want to join the Annals of the Greats, Maybe try inventing your own sport or developing your own language. Or if you want to be a real maverick, start preparing to be the very first person to buy the revolutionary iPhone 8, which will feature no headphone jack and no screen. You'll be paying more for less. Sure, people will think you're crazy, but at least you'll be first. Thanks for the view. Subscribe for more. 42. Some photos can tell rich, detailed stories. Others inspire a thousand questions. The two and a half thousand happy residents of Mayaki Island have nothing but good words to say about their cozy little home. Look, they are practically welcoming you with open arms.